fish. Good fish on. Good fish. Not a monster, but a good fighter. There you go, first fish of the day. Look at him, boy, he wanted that froggy fly. He wanted that froggy fly, he got it deep. There you go. Say, oh, look at that froggy fly way down in there. Well, that fish fought a lot harder than his size would indicate. That's why you want to barbless your hook, too. I'll pop that right out of there. See that thing way down in there? No problem, got my hemostats. I just reach down there and grab a hold of that fly and it pops right out. Piece of cake. No damage done. Nice little bass. Thanks for coming. On the froggy fly. Howdy. Welcome to Fishtails. I am going to tie another froggy fly. This one is designed to be the simplest tie possible. Uh, just a, a, a method to get you a working fly in the shortest possible time with the least amount of skill required to make it happen. You need bucktail or any kind of hair, but bucktail works best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this entire fly darker in color. So instead of using the bright, uh, bright lime chartreuse color, I'm using the center part, which is much darker. I'm gonna take a big chunk of that. Cut that. Weed it out just a little bit. This also becomes the back of the fly um, and the, the part that will help the legs spread apart. You tie that on. About like that, let it spin a little bit, that's fine. There we go. Nice big poofiness there at the back. Make sure you tie this down real good. And I'm stopping right about the point of the hook. You can kind of see that. All right, you latch that down real good. Then you take your first legs, which in this case I'm using these uh, primarily because that's what I have got to use. If I had green ones, I'd be using green ones, but I don't have any green ones. Now, I'm not going to make these legs extend back quite as long as I have in the past. Alright, there's one latched on. I'm going to match the other one. So that they come out the back of the fly about the right distance and they spread apart like that. See how they form a V? That's a natural, that's the natural way that the, that the fly is, or that the feather is arched. You can use, you can use straight ones, but they're harder to get to hold this shape. Or if they, if they naturally want to curve that way, then you use that to your advantage, and that's all, that's all I've done here. That one turned in a little on me, but that don't matter. Now I'm going to put a second fly, a second feather. One of these on the outside of this. I get two of them about the same size. They've got a little more. Let's see if I can get two of them that look like this. These two right here. All right. Now I got two more fly feathers. And I'm going to tie that doing the same sort of deal where it turns out you turn the, the natural arch on the natural curvature of the feather. Turn that out. Match them up distance back. About right about there.
I've made so many of these flies it doesn't take me very long. Pull that down where I want it. There we go. Latch those in. All right. Now you take a piece of foam. This is this is fairly tough. This will be the top of the fly. This foam is pretty dense and it's pretty tough, so it doesn't tear up. You can get this stuff, and this this is the same type. Uh, you can get this stuff in all different sizes and shapes, like this. This stuff here is not very tough. It's softer. It's a lot softer, uh, but it doesn't doesn't hold up quite as well when it comes to catching bass, because they really tear the heck out of these things. All right, see how I got a point cut on that? We're going to tie toward the front of the fly. Latch it on there. And it does have a tendency to want to turn. So the way I deal with that is I actually turn the foam and face it more toward me. That probably needs to be right about there. I'm going to, I'm going to say that's good. All right. Now, on the bottom of this fly, I'm going to, this, is what I, this is what's different about this tie. This is what makes it a little bit faster. I'm not going to tie in my second piece of foam. I'm going to take that and glue it to this one. But that'll be after I turn it back like this. All right, you start with that piece of foam. And I, I put a, a point on it, but that's not what matters. What matters is right here, you want to poke a hole somewhere about there and slide that over the hook. Keep in mind, you're going to glue the bottom to the top. So you go back here like that. All right, so this is gonna go in here like this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it closer to length. And you just tuck that under there like this. And you wanna take the top, and we're gonna glue these two surfaces together, and then we're gonna trim them. I got my super glue. We'll tell you one thing, this stuff will stick to your fingers. My understanding is they invented super glue during the Vietnam War as a surgical tool. They would actually glue the skin together, which would explain why it works so well on skin. All right, and boy, that stuck like the dickens. That's what I like about the foam, it really sticks. All right, now we're gonna come back and we're just gonna trim this part off the front. Got my hook underneath there. We're just gonna trim this off the front to start with, like that. You can make it look pretty in a minute. Then we're gonna come down the back of the fly and take it to a point. Something like that. See now it's, it's taking general shape. I should have tie wrapped that, but we're just gonna go like this. All right, this fly is seriously lopsided, but it does not matter because when it comes time to even it up, that's exactly what we'll do. I'm just trimming this excess foam out of here and evening up the fly. Just keep working on it. There we go. See now I've got the bottom. Got the bottom of it pretty well shaped. Let me clean the front up some. Actually, I'm going to put a little more super glue on here. Use your scissors. That way it doesn't stick to your fingers. I 
I suppose you could do this without tying at all if you wanted. There. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to level that surface off right there and kind of angle it up a little bit, and I'm going to put an eye right there. I'm going to even it up best I can. Now I got it all flat, the tight, the, the front of the fly is nice and tight. Still need to clean up the back just a little. You know, the thing about a foam fly is it's really not going to last very long. The better it works, the shorter its life will be, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Bass don't have much teeth, but what they do have just tears this foam up. Clean it up real good. See now it's looking fairly decent. I, I, I don't like putting a lot of foam on the underside because it changes the hook gap. But that's got a good, that's got a good distance there. If they get a hold of that, it'll catch them. And you can compress this. Put more glue in there and compress it like that, and squeeze that foam down even more, which. That can also be used to help hold the legs apart. Let me go ahead and do that. Put a little extra glue in here. And a little extra glue in here. And squeeze these down. See how B that thing is? That's what you want. You want them legs to spread out real good. That hair in the middle, that deer bucktail, that hair really keeps the, I glued my fingers together, that hair really keeps those feathers apart. It keeps them on that side of the fly. Well, that was supposed to be on the other side. There we go. This is a little bit of poofiness. See how that looks from that direction? That's how it looks from the top. Let me get this little thing out of the way. And it's just foam. If you make a mistake, no big deal. No big loss. You can peel the foam off of there and leave the back part. You can sacrifice whatever part of the fly you want. Alright, let's get some let's get some eyes on this thing. All right. I've trimmed the foam up real good. It's nice and round. It's got a decent shape to it. Now I'm gonna put the eyes on it. Put it back in the vise just because that makes it a lot easier to handle. Turn that rascal to the side. Lock her down. I got big green eyes or I got some little eyes. I think we'll try these. I really need a pair of tweezers to put these on without gluing them to my fingers. This is when I most often glue my fingers to either the eyeball Or something besides the fly. Oh, geez. So, see? Oh, there it is on my finger. It sticks like the dickens. Once that glue sets, though, it, it's not going anywhere. Alright, I'm going to hold that in there and hope it doesn't stick to my finger. Yeah, it didn't. Once it blends with that foam, it's not going anywhere. There you go. Fly's got an eyeball on one side. Now let's do the other side. You know, I'm I'm not real particular about the, the eyeballs on the fly. Generally the bass is not going to be able to see both eyes at the same time. So if they're not perfectly even, it doesn't really matter. But you do got to quit gluing them to your finger. All right, here we go. <laughs> Come on now. Stick. All right, we'll go back and hit that with the second one. Get more crap.
right on my fingers. Like he is. Peace cake. <laughs> 